Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I'm doing a tag video which was created by the lovely Simon Savage and it is the um, Women's Prize for Fiction tag. So Simon created this tag um, because it's the 25th anniversary of the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. It's at the stage now with the shortlist. We're waiting for the winner to be announced next month um, and this tag is all about the Women's Prize. So... I had a look to begin with, there's obviously been 24 winners to this point in time. So I've read six of them and I've got six of them on my TBR. So um, I've got sort of half of them in total. So the first question is, which was the first Women's Prize winner that you read? When did you read it and what did you think? The first one that I think that I read was We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. So that one I think I read in about 2010 because I remember which GP surgery I was working at at the time. So this is a book um, about a woman who is pregnant and then has a baby and she's not, from what I remember, she's not 100% sure how, about how she feels about having kids, I think, um, from the beginning. And she has this little baby, Kevin, and through the whole book, Kevin has is doing things which she perceives as acts of aggression uh, or or sort of not violence physically but like aggression or malice towards her and we're trying to decide is this just normal kid behavior or is he actually doing something which is you know um abnormal and the acts get more and more sort of extreme but then you don't know if he's doing the more extreme acts because He's sort of been um, kind of um, made to think that that's how he is or whether he was born that way. So it's kind of a bit of a chicken and egg thing. So I remember really enjoying it at the time. And I remember um, I remember watching the film. I didn't think the film was as good. I think Tilda Swinton's the main character in the film, the mum. So um, yeah, it was a it was a good book. I put, I don't know, I have no idea how many stars I gave it because it was ten years ago, but it was definitely a thought provoking book. And I read it before I had kids. So it'd be interesting to see if my um, sort of take on it changed having had kids now. Question number two: Which author have you read because of the prize who has become a favourite? So for this one, I would say Andrea Levy. So Small Island won. Um, the women's prize fiction one year i'm not sure which year and um that is a story which i still see on booktube it's a it's definitely a favorite on booktube um and i've also read by her the long song which i actually preferred to small island which i thought was fantastic and i've also got um is it? i've got this one by Angela Levy, which I haven't yet read, so never far from nowhere. So, um, yeah, so um, she has, become, I've, I've loved Small Island and The Long Song, and I'm sure I will love Never Far From Nowhere, because I've loved everything that I've read so far. Question number three, which favourite author of yours has yet to win the prize? So, I don't know if, I ha if I'd call them all favourites, but authors I really like who I'm surprised they haven't won the prize or who I think are very deserving. The first one I thought of was Jessie Burton because I've read her first two books, so The Miniaturist and The Muse, and I haven't read her third book yet. I have no idea why. That's just reminded me that I need to get on get on to that. Um, but I loved The Muse and I loved The Miniaturist and I think Jessie Burton's a, a brilliant writer and um, would be well deserving of, of being a winner. Um, the other two that I thought of were Kate Atkinson, um, um, Life After Light is one of my favourite books of all time. Um, I've got A God in Ruins, which I haven't read yet, and I've got the, is it Jackson Brady, the series that she's done? I've got the first one of those, the Case Histories book which would be really interesting to see her take on sort of crime fiction as well. And then the third one I thought was Sarah Waters. Um, I'm surprised that she hasn't won yet. Um, she's another author who's much loved um, in general and on booktube. Um, now question number four, which long list, short list or winner has surprised you the most and why? So I did have a look through all the previous sort of um years on the women's prize website 
and I was really surprised actually how many of the books that I've got that have been previously on the long list or the short list which I was really happy about because I didn't know that they're just books that I've obviously sort of picked up and there's quite a lot of them and there's a lot of them that I'd already read and thought oh yeah that was great um I think for there was none that had won I thought oh my goodness why did that win really um but the ones that most surprised me this year was that the Dutch House didn't make the shortlist and that Queenie didn't make the shortlist because I thought they were both absolutely outstanding books so I was quite sad that neither of them were on the shortlist. Um, the winner of the winners I've read, the one I liked the least and I know Simon and his mum love this book was Property by Valerie Martin. I just, I only gave it three stars. I found the characters, the main or the white characters I found so like appalling that I just couldn't like the book and so that one I didn't really enjoy um and so that one I guess was my sort of most surprising winner but question number five I love this question if you could be a judge which four women would you judge it with and why now this is really hard because I'm sure when I see other people's answers and I'm sure just like when I think about it for longer, there'll be women who I'm like, oh, I can't believe I forgot so-and-so. These are the ones that I thought at the time. So number one, my all-time favourite women, apart from like my mum, obviously, my all-time favourite women in the world, Oprah. Um, Oprah obviously like loves books and um, she has her own book club and a lot of her book club choices have like really resonated with me in the past. And so Oprah would definitely be um, one of my four judges. The next one would be my old English teacher, Mrs. Davidson, from school. So, you know, you really have those teachers that you'll never forget and that they're really inspirational. And I think Mrs. Davidson, like, totally sort of um, encouraged my love for books so much. She was such a great teacher. Um, she was always prepared to listen to our points of view and really think about them and, um, you know, how... You could always tell she took our points of view seriously and she she did reflect on them. She let us, like, I can remember, um, she just let us do, like, really random things. Like, I can remember her letting her, she would let some of our students, like, sit on top of the lockers for a lesson because that was something they did in Dead Poet Society. So she thought that that would be fine. Um, she used to, like, have whole lessons where she'd just give us, like, you know, those little chopper chop lollies. She'd give us like a whole, she'd have a whole bag of those. We'd all get to pick one and we'd just get to sit and read for the whole lesson. Um, so, yeah, I just like loved her. And she she ran this Shakespeare club at school, which I always wear where you read like a Shakespeare play a week. And I always wanted to be in that. But for some reason it was like on hiatus when I was the right age. So I was always sad about that. But um, she's just like an inspiring teacher. And um, yeah, she'll probably never know that I feel this way, but I do. <laughs> So she would be my second judge. My third judge is a fictional character. I don't know if that's allowed, but another person who like influenced me growing up was Jerry Potter from Dawson's Creek. I wanted to be Jerry Potter. Um, I loved that she was like really studious and um, she was really intelligent and she like loved reading and how she like, especially when she was at university and how she would discuss books and she wanted to be a writer and I loved all that stuff. And so I hope I can have a fictional character, but Jerry Potter would be on my list. The fourth person um, I would like on my group would be um, Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read and my lovely friend Charlotte. Um, I don't <laughs> like, I don't mean any disrespect to any of my other lovely booktube friends, but um, I just, me and Charlotte have some really great discussions about books and I have great discussions about books with a lot of people um so I'm not trying to leave anyone out but um we have some really lovely discussions and um I always learn a lot from her take on books as well and so um I would be really interested to hear her thoughts on like a, on a prize uh question number six which lesser known favorite author of yours would you like us all to read and which book would you recommend so Lesser known is really tricky here because a lot of the ones I could use to answer this, they're books that other people will have known and read about on BookTube. They're quite popular books or authors that have already a lot of following. So I've just picked um, two authors. So one 
is Dorothy Coombson. So she's a black British author. She writes um, two different kinds of books. She writes um, romances and she writes crime. I haven't actually tried any of her crime books yet. Although, are they, um, they might not be crime, they might be thrillers actually. But because I haven't tried any of them, I'm not 100% sure. Um, the romances are like, I, I really enjoy them. Um, the I've read one which has kind of a bit of a thrillery kind of crossover. Um, that one I really enjoyed and she's like a good presence online and I just like her as a person so that's um, one. Oh, and the book I'd recommend that I enjoyed um, the most probably was The Woman He Loved Before. And then another one, another author I wanted to recommend mm -hmm. is one that I've only just finished um, the first book of theirs that I've ever read but I really loved it and I literally can't wait to go and get all of the rest of their books and that is Lily King. I just finished reading or listening to an Audible and um, Writers and Lovers by Lily King and it was like a, a perfect fusion of literary writing with enough with plot and um, it's about a girl called uh, Cass Casey who is um, a writer but she's working as a waitress because she obviously is in a lot of debt and she's trying to support her writing habit financially and it's about her as she goes she starts into she's quite a broke a broken person like her mum has died she's in a lot of debt she's living in this tiny little room she's surrounded by some kind of tortured writer types and she um finds herself in early relationships with two men and she has to sort of decide what to do and this is not like a kind of a uh what am I trying to say? It's not like a kind of light-hearted, jolly romance at all. It's like in-depth discussion, talking about her feelings. Like, oh, it's so good. I loved it so much. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to reading more Lily King. Question number seven. Which book published before the prize started could have won? So this one for me is a book that has sentimental value to me because... Um, it's one that my mum loves. It's one that I remember reading off her shelf when I was really small. When I say really small, I don't mean like a little kid. I mean like, I don't know, maybe 11 or something. And um, I really loved it. And then my mum, I think my mum got me this copy, I think. And um, I really enjoy it. I'm going to reread it again because I've read it a couple of times now. Um, and that is The Prime of Miss Jean Brody by Muriel Spock. So I've read, I already read two Mural Sparks. This is the first one. The second one was A Far Cry from Kensington. That's it. And she's read. Lo she's written loads. So I really should have. Um, I really should read more. But she's a Scottish writer, and um, this was written in 1951. And Miss Jean Brady is a teacher at a girls' school, and she has what's called like her set, which she calls the creme de la creme. So the best of the best girls that she picks for her set. And all the girls are kind of a bit in love with her and want to be in her set. Um, and she's quite a kind of a different rebellious teacher as well. And it also jumps forward in time quite a lot. Like it tells you like who'd have known that in 10 years time this would have happened to this girl and all that kind of thing. So um, it's only a very little book. It's more of a novella really, I guess. It's um, 128 pages. One definitely to read again. And um, like I say, sentiment value because it's like a, a big me and my mum both love. Question number eight, which has been your favourite winner so far? So the ones I have read, I've read We Need to Talk About Kevin, um, Small Island by Andrea Levy, Property by Valerie Martin, Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi, How to Be Both by Ali Smith and The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. They're the ones that I've read. <clears throat> I think of these, Small Island by Andrea Levy would be my favourite one. The ones that I still have on my TBR, which I haven't read yet, is The Lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver, The Road Home by um, Rose Tremaine, Half of a Yellow Sound by Chimamanda and Gozi Adichie, An American Marriage by Tayori Jones, The Power by Naomi Alderman, and May We Be Forgiven by Maggie O'Farrell. Question number nine. Are there one or more books published since April 2020 that you've read or want to read that you would like to see on next year's list? So I don't tend to read like super current books and some of the ones I've read which have been released recently have been YA, so obviously they don't count towards this. Um, so I don't, ones that I've read that have kind of come out fairly recently have still been before April. 
So the, the one that I thought of, which everyone's talking about at the moment, and I cannot wait to read it because I've heard like amazing things for everyone, is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Um, we'll see if that's on next year's prize. But um, yeah, I've just heard so many things in favour of that book. And then the last question is, which book would you like to win this year and why? Well, I've only actually read one of the books on this year's shortlist, and that is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everisto. It was a five-star outstanding book for me I don't need to say what it's about because everybody will know it already but um I'd love that to win especially because she was deprived of her sort of solo win at the booker last year um I've got Hamnet which I haven't read yet um that is on the list yeah that is on the list um I haven't got any of the others but yeah I'm gonna vote for Girl Women Other by Bernadine Everisto because I thought it was outstanding. I loved it. It was so clever. Just mm, so good. <laughs> that was my professional opinion. <laughs> so that is the um, the women's prize tag. Thank you, Simon, for creating. And um, if you do the tag yourself, then um, leave the link in the comments for me. Um, or if you want to tell me your thoughts about this year's prize or any of the previous prizes or any of the books I mentioned, it would be lovely to have a chat in the comments. And I will speak to you all soon. Bye!